Right, Billy Cunningham, and with all the stuff going on in Washington, there's nothing more important to you and I than the election of a conservative constitutional Republican to the governor's office here in the state of Ohio. And uh, Governor-elect John Kasich, welcome again to the Bill Cunningham Show. Bill, it's thank, thank you for having me on. You, well, you rock, man, <laughs> is all I can say. Well, how does it feel? Because the excitement of the election is over. You've won. You've won by more than 100,000 votes. It was a great victory, a good campaign. But now, beginning on Monday, you got to get down <laughs> to work, to business. Bill, um, a day after the election, we already started. I mean, I, I was up at American Greetings up in Cleveland. You know, I'd heard uh, that they were going to leave the state of Ohio. I went up to Cleveland. I mean, I've been all over the state. I've been to Cincinnati. I've been down to Cincinnati State. I've met with the community there. I've been to Dayton, to Wright-Patterson. I, I've traveled all over the state. And it isn't, it's really interesting. It's not like, okay, we're lining up now, ready, set, go. We've been going. Uh, since really uh, we took one day kind of off and then really on it. So uh, a lot of things going on. Picked a big chunk of my cabinet now, people who, uh, you know, understand the big issues related to economics and job creation. Um, you know, I'm just engaged in so many things. So I don't know if it will be much different, uh, except, you know, I'll be held accountable for anything that happens in the state. But, you know, we've been in, uh, we've been in pretty good uh, warm-up here. Should I call you John or Governor? Whatever you want to, Bill, as long as you give me two each side at uh, the spring on the golf course. I'll say, Governor, uh, you're catching some flack for having this secret swearing-in ceremony, and I'm thinking, <laughs> who cares? Well, but explain to me why that's yeah. happening. We wanted to, you know, it's been traditional that, I mean, at least for the last two or three governors, that they get sworn in at midnight at their home. Yeah. And so that's what this was. It was like, okay, let's get sworn in so, uh, you know, so that I can, you know, be in charge in case something happens. And it was going to be at our home. And we kind of, want, you know, we didn't want everybody there. And it's become apparent to me, though, even with people that helped on the campaign, the press and everybody else, it's become you know, a very hard thing to manage. We're just going to open it up. I'm going to do it down at the state house. We're going to invite anybody in that wants to come in. You know, I mean, the family of the of the cabinet who will be sworn in. I'll be sworn in. We'll invite the press, and you know, it's just it's become too difficult to manage. So we're just going to do it downtown. Another thing you've caught some flack for is not living in the governor's mansion yet staying at home. I met your young twin daughters. I met your wife, who looked to me to be like your oldest daughter. <laughs> and um, I said, the guy wants to live at home, doesn't want to live in uh, wherever they, I was in the governor's mansion once, and it was a big drafty place, I think it's in Beckley or somewhere, I'm not sure. Well, why are you living at home and not moving into the governor's well, mansion? Well, I mean, first of all, we'll, we'll use the mansion for, you know, official events, and, you know, we'll, I'm sure we'll spend some time there as well. But we're going to be at home because my daughters go to school uh, in, you know, not, it's not really close, but it's a lot closer than Bexley is. And my daughters are 10. They're in, they're going to be 11. They're in, they're in the fifth grade. And, you know, Bill, I also didn't want to put them behind a fence. And, uh, you know, it's kind of that, that goldfish bowl. And um, it, it, it'll work for us. And uh, in terms of the security of our house, that's highway patrol activity. They'll probably, you know, Rhodes did this. Jim Rhodes right. did this when he was governor. Right. So, you know, if, if I lived in the mansion, they'd have to protect my house. The fact that I live in the house, they still have to guard the mansion. It's just the way it, it is. And uh, it'll all work out. It, it's really, it's, we're most comfortable where we are. And frankly, I don't think I've caught a lot of flack. A lot of people are glad that I'm yeah. going to try to maintain some sense Normal. of normalcy. Now, and, you know, that's uh, what we're doing. Another issue is the unions. I think the unions and others spent tens of millions of dollars yeah. to smear you and make you look like an aardvark with a horn. And yeah. they did everything in their power to personally defeat you. Yeah. And this isn't payback to the unions because, after all, I know you as a person for the last 20, 25 years. But you have put out a proposal to make it uh, illegal for uh, teachers unions to strike. And so explain yeah, for all public employees. I mean, everybody. look, I mean, there's a, a bunch of things we have to do. First of all, our cities, our communities are awash in debt and they're having more and more difficult time being able to control their costs. Think about this. 
people, you know, get binding arbitration put on them, and that means that a city has to has to agree to a settlement imposed by an outsider, and then the people that live in the city have to pick up the bill. So what we're suggesting is, look, no more binding arbitration. Don't impose a tax increase on people, something they can't afford. Uh, look, when your contract runs out, keep negotiating. You know, reach a conclusion, collectively bargain, but don't strike. If you're going to strike, we're going to find some people that would like your job. And I think it's a very reasonable. We're going to narrow the scope of bargaining so that schools and cities can can operate more like a business without being hamstrung. And so these are these. This is not an attack on anybody. This is a reasonable approach in the 21st century. We, we wrote this binding arbitration collective bargaining bill. You know, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, passed only with Democrat support, and we're revisiting the law. We're not going to eliminate collective bargaining, but we are going to give uh, the tools to the people that run our communities more authority to manage their costs. Governor, uh, what is the total budget deficit in the state of Ohio you're going to face between now and July 1st? Don't know, Bill. As hard as it is to believe, we still do not have revenue estimates. Now, the reason that occurred is because I suspect that the last administration didn't want to show anybody how bad things were. And uh, so come the 10th, we'll get a full look at where we are. Bill, we have a tax cut that came in on January 1. Our income tax rate is below 6 percent now for the first time in a long time we intend to preserve it and we intend to balance the budget and if we do not do this bill we're going to continue to empty out our population centers because people are leaving we're going to continue to see our young people leave we have to become competitive and desirable again as a state where jobs can be created and i'm not going to let anything stand in my way on that well, when a kid gets out of Butler County, and I spoke to uh, Boehner about this about a month ago at a Boehner, I don't think I know him. John John, John Boehner. Boehner. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's going to be speaker. Boehner, that That's guy. Right. He is speaker now. So, I, I, in about an hour, I spoke to him about about a month ago about this, and I said, John, let's say you're a kid that comes out of Middletown High School, and you're 18 years old, and you don't have the academic skills to go to college, which uh, many of us do not have. And you want to get a job and you want to live in Middletown and Butler County. You want to get a wife or if you're a girl, you want to get a husband, have a couple kids and live a middle class lifestyle. Where does that kid coming out of Middletown High School at the age of 18 or 19 get a job that pays him or her twenty five to forty thousand dollars a year in work? And Banner said to me, there are no jobs like that. So what do you say to a high school kid in Ohio or Kentucky, Indiana that comes out of high school? They're not not academically oriented, and they want to enter the American workforce, and they want to work, but there's no jobs. Well, first of all, Bill, we got we have to train them. I mean, one of the things you know, you, you go down to Cincinnati State and talk to them down there; they do a great yep. job. Yep. You give them skills. Everybody now has to be computer literate. So one thing is, in high school, if they want to go the vocational route, let's let them go yep. there. Yep. Yep. You don't have to tell them everybody has to go to college. No. no. Secondly, we've got to revive for a lot of them manufacturing, advanced manufacturing in our state. Uh, you know, you, you, there is no reason to give up on manufacturing. Those are pretty good jobs. In fact, the more skills you have, even if you don't go to college, the more you can earn. So the goal is, on a regional basis, to begin to figure out how we leverage the assets that we have to drive employment. And when we do that, we can create these jobs again. I don't have any doubt about it. They may be different, but let me just tell you. Let me give you an example. Out in the eastern part of the state, we, we think we have these deposits, Marcellus Shale, right, Utica right, Shale, okay? Right. Out of that, you know, there may be an industry where you make pipes and pumps, and we can reinvigorate manufacturing if we put our shoulder to the wheel. I've talked to people in Cleveland who were involved in this bill. None of these things are dead. The problem is... People would rather go somewhere else to start their business or, or to move their business. We have to stop that. If we have lower taxes, better regulations, better legal system, open up our universities to train our people and help our businesses, we can rebirth Ohio. There is no doubt because of our location, and our people, and we do have a lot of good things going for us. So you're saying hydrocarbons could be the future of Ohio, much like it's been for Texas, that the eastern part, especially the Appalachian part, has huge hydrocarbon deposits that have not been mined. Well, we're not sure yet, Bill. We're, you know, they're drilling wells, and look, there is no silver bullet. You know, it's not like, well, this will fix it, okay? There's no one thing, but all these things have potential. 
Right, Patterson Air Force Base. If we can figure out how to get more business over the fence, maybe create an enterprise zone in Dayton, which would mean that businesses would have incentives to locate there, thus we create jobs. Uh, the Piketon plant, you know, I was on with yeah. Rob Portman the other day. If right. we can, I mean, there's, it's no one thing, but all these things give us reason to be very hopeful that we can rebirth Ohio. Well, John Kasich, lastly, uh, you came to, to fame in 1995 when you were chairman of the house budget committee the finances of america were severely out of whack in 1995 we were coming off a rather nasty recession and uh, as chairman of the house budget committee in washington you gave america a balanced budget in fact a surplus so you are uniquely positioned of all the candidates that have ever taken the office of governorship of this state, uniquely positioned to understand budgets and understand how to grow economies understand how to cut and so the mission that you have from people like me and Tea Party advocates and many others is, is to not raise taxes and to cut the growth and to cut state spending. And if you if you meet that goal, you're going to anger 49 percent of the people. Uh, no, you know, it's you know what? The, I don't care if it's 51 percent. That's life. I am not in this job to get another political job or to keep this job. That's not my motivation. My motivation and it isn't the budget. It's bigger than that. It is creating an environment in the state of Ohio where people can find work. Yes. We do not have it right now, Bill. We have the potential to recreate that. The budget is just a way station. Look, we need lower taxes. We need less spending. We need less regulations. We need an improved legal system. We need better educated people. And we need to have business savvy people talking to business savvy people about Ohio. I will be the first person to be elected governor who has had extensive experience in the private sector in a heck of a long time. I know how it works. I know how they think. We have to go and recruit them. The, okay. th the thing I like hearing from you, John, we have about a minute remaining. The thing I like hearing from you is that you are willing to be a one-term Ohio governor to make Ohio better. You're going to do what is right, maybe not what is popular. Well, Mike, my, my, you know, nobody wants to be unpopular, Bill, but I've always found if you do the right thing, it all works out. You know, if I were to sit around and do political calculations on decision making, it would be stupid and it would be it would be it would not be loyal to the people of this state who yeah. gave me this opportunity. So people are going to get mad. Of course, they're going to get mad. But you know what? If we're all in this together, Ohio gets fixed. People get jobs. Those people in Butler County and Warren County find those jobs. Hey, man, what could be better? Godspeed, John Kasich. All right, sir. God bless you. Thank, Thank you, John. You, Bill. Thank you. Now right, let's continue. That's my buddy. I like Kasich. I think he's got a tough road to hoe. I think it's going to be difficult when you have a 20% across the board cut in state government. There's all kinds of special interests very unhappy. So we'll see what happens in the future. But, John, thank you very much. I'll call him John until Monday. Then he'll be the governor. Godspeed, John Kasich on 700 WLW.